I'd like to welcome everybody to the Friday live stream here, Independent Investor Channel. My name is Ryan, fastest 60 minutes on YouTube. Been rolling out the product a few years now, um, kind of hitting our groove. Love doing the product. We're uh, fairly consistent every Friday uh, because the topic is that important. It's uh, way more important to put a lot more emphasis on this specific topic. Um, and I think in, um, in, in, in a general sense, there's a lot of people out there that, um, you know, don't put any thought at all. Uh, they don't put any emphasis on it. Um, and it's times like these, certainly, where, you know, folks that maybe are not involved in the market are, are saying, see, I told you so. <laughs> and those that are involved in the market are like, holy shit, what did I get myself into here? Um, it's really times like this where I shine. Um, you know, stock market investing is not like going out and doing a job um, and you work for said number of hours and you get paid for that job, right? There's a guaranteed return that you're going to earn X number of dollars per hour. Stock market investing is not not like that. Um, sometimes the, uh, um, the, the very work that you put into the stock market um, is, is extremely unnatural in, insofar as it's something that you've probably never, ever deployed uh, in way of a strategy to actually make sense stock market investing. Um, there are times in the market, these are the times I allude to that are um, completely humbling. Um, I'm going through kind of a, dump, a double humbling right now. Um, I've got um, elements of the portfolio certainly that are, are that are working, uh, being overshadowed by, by some other elements within the portfolio specifically. Um, I'm going to talk holistically tonight about you know what it means to be a retail investor i got some guys hitting me up and they're like jesus i've got you know 75 percent of my life savings in one stock and i'm just getting crushed um some um, really unfortunate uh reactions to the stock market when it comes up and, and bites people in the ass the way this is um it it it, it cannot be that way it can't um we we've said many many times when we talk about the fundamentals of wealth building, never invest what you can't afford to lose. Uh, if, if that rationale held true 100% of the time, nobody would invest in the stock market, right? The flip side of that coin is anybody who's been involved in the in the stock market uh, in the history of the S&P 500 back to the 1920s, 99%, because we cannot say with 100% certainty that all participants in stock market investing from then until now, just over 100 years of market activity, have in fact succeeded. So the contrast between those two facts are, are just absolutely staggering to me in that the odds really are stacked in your favor if you are willing to buy into the long-term philosophy in the market. So when you do truly buy into it, and you look at the the volatility in the short term, a, a week or or two months. I you know I feel like I've been projecting to you guys over the last couple of months, give you a pulse of the portfolio that it's been um, a bit of a drag for me. It's it's a bit of a drag. Doing this a long long time, been through it in and out, etc. Um, I can comment on on it in the short term. Um, I can comment about individual stocks that I might be you know getting kicked in the nuts in over and over and highly on right. I was having a good banter here with Verge. Uh, you know, prior to coming live. I love that stuff. I love the banter going back and forth. I, I think sometimes getting a real pulse of where I'm coming from with my 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 actual um, feeling, if that exists, right? There's no emotion in stock market investing. No, I, I choose to I chose to take the position in the stock. And um, could I have foreseen um, that we'd be uh, reaching all time lows? Uh, every single day? No, 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 I couldn't. Could I have forecasted that um, the company would have gone silent on the line? Um, of course not. Uh, of course not. Um, there's just as many catalysts that have transpired with regard to that specific holding um, that I also could not have forecasted that were uh, positive, right? The 75 of all BEV for the uh, Hypertruck ERX, um, the, the battery management system and charging eight minutes, none of that stuff's gone away. Um, the, the, the 40 uh, uh, Hypertruck ERX order from Monet, um, things of that nature that, um, I, I, you know, through all the due diligence that you do, um, and just here as of late, three new deliveries to a company that I had never heard of, uh, and I cover highly on, I do, uh, just like uh, having some nice banter 
um, with uh, one of the patrons here in the group. I think it was Alexa was as well, came in fairly early. I was having a good uh, back and forth about the chip space. Um, that was pretty cool, actually. Um, but, um, you know, nonetheless, there is a, a staunch difference. Yeah, it was Alexa who was covering some really good uh, activity in the, the chip space right now. But, you know, I, I think sometimes social media does a really good job of, of portraying um, something that is, is not true um, with regard to the, the, actual, um, the actual application. Um, my application runs really, really deep. And I might say something on Twitter that um, I use in the capacity of Twitter. Uh, but as far as uh, my uh, holistic opinion on what I, I'm putting into, you know, a, a few hundred characters on a, on a Twitter feed um, does not speak to my total um, disposition on an opinion at the time of making that. Right. Um, and and Twitter's a great place for that. I don't make money on Twitter. I don't I don't give two shits, to be honest with you. Um, I go in there and fire away. Uh, people disagree with me. I'm like, yeah, that, that's awesome. I agree with you. You can disagree with me all you want. It's no problem. It's social media, man. Um, if, if you actually sat with me on a one on one meeting, you would understand a lot more holistically about where my focus lies. Case in point, the group here. That's why I'm so aggressive every Friday on coming on, um, sharing my uh, insights on stock market, the pulse of the markets, uh, pulse of the market and sentiment, at least for me, has been driving um, down pretty good. I'm a, I'm a little concerned with the broader markets uh, holding up here uh, in, in a fairly decent state. Um, I will tell you uh, some of the moves uh, in, that I've made here. I did fund one of the Roth IRAs. Uh, a strategic fund up that I usually try to do. I usually can't hold off on making those strategic funds. So if you guys are out there and you've come into the 2021, excuse me, the 2022, 2023 eligibility, uh, you can do that. Um, that eligibility has just opened up as of January 1 of 2022. If you still have contributions to make for 2021, um, feel free to do that. You are eligible to do that up until the tax deadline. Uh, of this year, which is uh, around April 15th, give or take a few days. Okay. Um, so keep in mind that those strategic applications are there. Um, added a little bit to the VIG, which is my Vanguard's uh, dividend appreciation fund. Um, so I, I was glad to do that. It was a strategic uh, uh, initiative of mine to allocate a little bit more to the passive strategy in my portfolio and become a little bit less dependent upon um, having such higher positions in dividend paying stocks. Uh, there is pockets of value right now that's working in the portfolio, um, some of which has been mentioned here in the group, but I will uh, double down a little bit. Caterpillar is on fire from the low twos. Um, Lockheed Martin uh, just seemed like last week was in the low 300s at 325, maybe three high 320s. Um, and now it's jumped $50 in, in a week. It seems like uh, it's uh, done quite well. I bought the position fairly high and I bought a position right out that 320, 330 mark. Um, and, and so I've got a, a cost basis that has put me right at around uh, even money. Uh, where it's trading out right now, but Lockheed at 16 times looks pretty good. Uh, JP Morgan today on the dip, I got lucky. I, I, I sold the entire position yesterday uh, and, and, and then I bought back today. So I, I avoided a $10 swoon. I looked at it, had no intention of buying back into it, but at 9.5 uh, forward earnings there, which is indicative of a lot of financial stocks right now. Uh, Citigroup is one of them that's trading at an, an at, a, at a very anemic eight times uh, forward earnings, uh, and their international book of business is is fabulous. Uh, it's one of the top banks that I'm I'm bullish on, and then then of course I own in a lot smaller capacity some of the others uh, three major banks, uh, the Canadian banks. Uh, or a real bright spot last year in 2021 for me. Uh, got about a 30% return in each of them. And, um, it, you know, just absolutely fantastic there. And then added some some smaller positions as well uh, in Goldman Sachs that that went off. It traded like a penny stock, for Christ's sake. Uh, and, and some smaller positions in, in Bank of America uh, and Charles Schwab as well. Uh, so to round out those exposures, I've been off the upload schedule this week a little bit. No problem. 
I digress from this. Um, I have fun when I do it and it stays fresh for me. But you guys got to understand, man, I'm not one of those guys that looks at the YouTube opportunity and, and flips out just like a lot of people flip out when they look at the stock market. Oh, God damn it. This is just not working out the way I want it right now. You know, I don't look at it. I look at my YouTube channel the same way I look at the stock market and I'm not really in any rush. And I think there's probably a lot of people that would be like, go for it, Ryan, drop the dagger, drop the hammer. Uh, I can't do that. I'm, I'm always foot stomping where I see true value uh, on the channel. And, you know, by nature of us doing one-on-one uh, -on -one coachings, which has been a fabulous opportunity, uh, made possible through my Shopify website, which has just been a, a fabulous product. Um, and, and I could get one or two a year and be just as happy with that. Um, it, it's what spurs my Viper group. Um, and I thank you to all the new Vipers uh, in the group that have renewed their subscription. It helps keep that uh, product afloat. And, and uh, it's, it's not one of those things that I'm looking to get rich on. Uh, if the product grows, great. But I've got a fabulous core group in there right now. Uh, Bob Wright, I think, or, you know, and all good. I, I know they look at this as kind of being kind of a family group and it is a family feel. Um, I, I want folks in there that uh, feel like they have ownership over the product. Uh, and if they don't, they're free to leave. Absolutely. They are free to leave. Um, I'm jamming my Patreon with all ad free content, exclusive content that I, ha I have not released anywhere. Um, step by step tutorials on imagining that I'm a new investor sitting across from me and I just go on and I talk. Um, and those and those opportunities to join both my Viper group and the Patreon group are made available uh, through independentinvestorgroup.com. So while the market is doing what it is that the market is going to do, do I fret? Uh, no, I don't. Um, I focus on strategic uh, elements of my life that are going on that are that are really working and and deserve my time. To be honest with you, the stock market at this particular juncture um, really doesn't deserve my time. In other words, I've already done the work to put in the portfolio and 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 do what it is that I've needed to do to establish those positions in the capacity uh, and with the scale that I want. Okay, so it's working. So it doesn't do me any good to just continue to double and triple and quadruple down on what I've already got established. Um, I will say that the majority of my monitoring in the market right now has very little to do with me sitting there drooling over what 3M is doing every day. Um, I, I spend a lot of my time covering Hylion, uh, very hungry. I'm sharing in the frustration uh, across the investor community. And, and like I said, there would have been no way to forecast um, that Hylion Holdings would have thought it in their best interest uh, to go silent on the line uh, at, at the time where the shareholder value needs them the most. Uh, I, I'm not sure what strategic angle they're trying to play. Um, I seemingly find uh, time in my busy schedule, and it is busy. I hold down a full-time job OK, this YouTube thing is it's a project for me. It's something that I just really enjoy doing. And how is it? How is it? And I'll ask this rhetorically that a, a, a billion dollar company with a division within that company that is in charge of investor relations. I will say it again. Investor relations finds it in their best interest to go silent on the line. Furthermore, irrespective of what investor relations to do what about the top guy you know i mean i'm the ceo of cornerstone capital solutions llc independent investor channel all rights reserved 2022 and if i thought that something was going awry or somebody had a problem with the way i did business i would come out and face that and that's just how problems are dealt with nowadays but it, it perhaps maybe thomas healy definition of, um, of of a challenge in his life or or adversity in his life is perhaps maybe coming in uh, second place at a, a science competition. A and maybe he's never been truly tested. Me, I've been kicked in the face a thousand times in my life. If you don't believe me, look in my eye. Look in my eyes and tell me I'm not serious about having my ass whipped 
so many times uh, that it's molded me into be a fighter. And, and I think more people need to absolutely do that. I, I think you don't need to just sit back a, and be a whipping boy or girl <laughs> for that fight. It, it doesn't mean that I'm overly emotional. It doesn't mean that at all. It means I'm being critical. And, you know, I, hey, I'm going to say what it is that I want to say, because in this country, I do my part, trust me, in supporting free speech. And the second uh, that I'm out of line insofar as not being able to exercise my right to free speech, um, I'll leave. Um, I will leave this country, no problem. If we stop being the country that I believe that it is and that we get to express our opinions freely, as long as it's done with respect, um, no, no problem. And, and, and to each his own with regard to their respect and their disposition. But, you know, it's interesting to me, perhaps the lack of perspective that uh, folks have not only in their application, Hylian is a really bad example because it's a speculative position uh, at that. But I think perspectives on stock market investing as a whole, in other words, you don't, it doesn't require any emotion at all to do what I did today and buy 25 shares of VIG in the morning when I saw that the market had dipped. Did I know we were going to do kind of one of uh, those rolling reversals that, that we kind of get in the market? Now, when I see the market down three, 400 points, that's a time where I look to kind of step in and do some strategic buying. I had the Roth contributions in there. I knew I wanted to supplement my, my VIG holding uh, and my VUG holding and my VNQ, which is utilities and real estate, respectively. Um, there's really no other single positions in stock that I'm interested in outside of just maybe putting X number of dollars to my dividend portfolio that holds 79 stocks in there. I should round it up and just put that 80th in there, you know, but it has 79 right now. So if I took a thousand or 2000 or $5,000 bill and just decided to invest in the market, that's always a nice opportunity to buy the market uh, on the dip, as well as my sector portfolio that has done just absolutely fantastic and just going on a couple of years. Um, I share those testimonials with you guys openly. To be quite honest with you guys, I don't have to do that, okay? In the hands of lesser of an investor, trust me, a lot of people would be looking at how they can scheme and, 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 and manipulate and do everything under the sun, man, to, to grow those portfolios outside of their capacity. Uh, I have a perspective about this gig to know that the critical element to anybody's portfolio is to apply that magic medicine of time. And time is not how you define it, okay? Time is how the market defines it over the long term, not you looking at it from a day-to-day -day perspective and saying that everything is going to hell in a handbasket just because the market has a sequence of down days um, that have uh, put negative sentiment on the, the, the horizon a little bit. That's just not how it works, okay? So to grab a little per bit of perspective on this, perhaps maybe by putting your focus elsewhere, it really will help you deal with these downturns. Um, stay with us, guys. We're going to deal with uh, portfolios. We're going to track progress week over week, um, show you guys how we've absolutely driven the portfolio. I've got some people that are very concerned with my portfolio and that I'm going to lose everything. Um, I'm going to show you the numbers, how you can shake out and you can come to your own decision, uh, whether, you, whether or not you think I'm uh, uh, running the risk of losing everything uh, in my stock market application, um, or that maybe it's not quite as worse as uh, people would presume it to be. Uh, I, I spend very little time um, uh, questioning the applications of others. Um, and I would just kindly suggest that perhaps maybe you take a, a, a page out of my playbook and apply that same uh, level of scrutiny, perhaps to how you look at others and how they apply um, with, with a filter to say, hey, all right, man, I see what this individual is doing. It may make sense for them, but here's what kind of makes sense for me. I, I like what Ryan's talking about with the passive application. Maybe I've got a little place in my portfolio for a little bit of dividend stocks. You know, I'm a big fan of Home Depot. Ryan, is Home Depot a good investment? Certainly, right? Um, I like Costco. Can you tell me a little bit about the business model at Costco? What makes it a good investment? 
Well, it's a good investment because they don't make a dime on the groceries that they sell you, okay? They make all their money on their memberships. Man, it's a beautiful thing. And membership businesses uh, are, are fabulous businesses to be involved with. Lots to talk about tonight, guys. Appreciate the gallery. There's 75 in here, strong man. Never, ever been a better time to be a, a market investor. Never. Things are rapidly changing. It is a dynamic time. We are hard pressed to go through a day where the market isn't up a few hundred or down a few hundred. That is indicative of the volatility that we are incurring at this particular juncture as so many different catalysts are being priced into what's going on right now. Leaps and bounds, progresses in technology, uh, chips that are going into a number of different applications, autonomy, uh, driving, mining, cryptocurrency, Everything that's going on right now is absolutely adding to this recipe that is a complex recipe at that. But we always try to water it down a little bit, make it a little bit more palatable for the beginning investor. So you can kind of understand what to expect when you put your capital to risk in the stock market. Guys, be back in the gym. Talk about a multi-track application. It's um, times like this where I kind of look at what I've been able to piece together in my life and um, the things that have nothing to do with the stock market at all um, that, that I kind of lean against during times like this. I want you guys to listen up here, okay? If you're spending too much time, and it's tough coming from me because I'm a student to the market and I do monitor the market probably more than the average bear. Okay. I will admit to it. Um, I'm addicted. <laughs> Perhaps I should seek some therapy. No, I just, you know, I'm a lover of life. The stock market is a fascinating um, opportunity to uh, put capital to risk in a, in a way that you deem appropriate for you. Fascinating. Um, I'm, I'm absolutely intrigued. I always have been. Uh, financial markets have always intrigued me. And it, it's um, all, always uh, been my question of society as to why we don't offer these topics in school. And it doesn't have to be advanced, you know, um, valuing of, of stock or, or fundamental or technical. It doesn't have to be that. It really just can be a very, very simple um strategy of of being a participant in the the very system that we've built the capitalistic uh system that we've built in that the easy convenience to run to a walmart or a target or home depot or to get your you know uh, uh iphone uh plugged into any one of the major five telecoms and to start asking yourself this is crazy man you know it's it's hard to walk into a t-mobile and 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 find a, an empty store because they're that busy how can i become a participant in that you know i i walk through the mall and i'm like man this is crazy people in there just buying shit hand over fist man it, it's amazing to me the mall is one of those entertaining things for me with as, as somebody like who's got a a, a glint of minimalism in, in other words i truly have been in that space on the boat when I lived on the ocean, where food, water, uh, uh, fuel, <laughs> and the air that I breathe was, was what I had. And it was some of the happiest time I've ever had in my entire life. Now, since those days, I've since complicated things. And, you know, I speak for and am responsible for a family, right? Um, those things that, uh, you know, Kind of put a little bit more pressure on me to to perform i'm i'm a i would do anything for them i'm i'm a selfless person I'm, i don't do any of these projects um for 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 me um, i do it for them if if they uh, end up taking on an empire someday so be it i i have no problem with that at all i'll, I'll die a happy man um, i'm living life right now 
make no mistake about it, each and every single one of you guys. And I wish I could talk to every single one of you guys, man, that pop in here, man, because that's what living is all about, man. It really is. It's not necessarily about that day to day shit that I talk about. And uh, oh, my God, you know, highly on what the heck are they doing? You know, Thomas Healy sucks and we need to fire him and all that stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. You know, opinions are definitely far and few between. And, and if you followed me on Twitter, you'd be like, God dang, Ryan, are you are you still invested in this company? <laughs> yeah, the disconnect between a Twitter, is that what it's called? A, 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 a tweet, is that what it's called? Right? This is what happens when you give a microphone and a social media presence to an old 43-year-old like myself. And you're like, God, Ryan, really? Oh, you know, I think it speaks to my old school's pers perspective a little bit. And I do hold the position. Um, I probably get put some shares today. Uh, unfortunately, my strike was passed at 550, which, you know, is just another kick in the nuts with with this company. But uh, I, I was willing to buy the stock at 550. Uh, I'm certainly willing to have the shares put to me here with the recovery in the stock today uh, came off of that fi uh, 509, 508 base, right? Uh, for you guys that cover the company, um, you know what I'm talking about. 508 509 does it see a four in front of it i don't know don't really care you know it, it's absurd now that the stock price is going all the way down to its value in cash i think debt is so much more glorified in the stock market look at at&t i don't know if at&t ever has a chance of ever like becoming even break even on their company but that's glorified right um, they get valued at a specific multiple they make killer money they're an established company they're fabulous right uh, my point is a company like hylion that's just started out gets no credit for any of their proprietary anything um, right now value at 9.18 so about 950 million i guess is, is kind of where they sat maybe a little even a little less than that um, values them at 1.35 cash so, you know, where you've got uh, companies that are trading at 100 times multiples, companies that have no business trading at, up, up that high, uh, you've got a, a severe disconnect between these companies that, uh, as of late, have really, really rolled off. They really have rolled off. SoFi, Hylion, um, all the EVs uh, really rolled off. I didn't look into the uh, subpoena. Uh, that hit highs on some people were asking me, Ryan, you suck, man, your highs on. I sold it after a day. Um, I took a nice $300 profit and paid for my trip to Charlottesville, Virginia. So um, I guess I'm the asshole. I don't know. It's amazing how there's so many people out there who know exactly what I'm doing um, with with my agenda. Another page out of my playbook, man, take it. OK, your your effing business is yours, man. It is your business. OK, it's not mine. It's not my place to tell you how to do this and that. So I think a lot of people like me. Absolutely. Um, they could do away with the whole like YouTube thing. Like, hey, you should check this guy out. He's on YouTube. And people are like, oh, what? You can't you can't do that on YouTube. You can't find good information from anybody. <laughs> oh, the stigmas that we work against. Right. It's quite amazing. Um, but uh, I digress. I take advantage of this opportunity to reach as many people, uh, not only here domestically in the U.S., but abroad as well, because I think we're, we're, we're an effing disaster. Um, I think we spend too much. I think we run up too much debt. Um, and it's the mentality that we get on not to provide proper credence to those companies out there that are trying to be fiscally responsible uh, and at this partic particular juncture are really in kind of a, a darker period uh, in the evolution of the company, uh, in in stepping into what they are forecasting to be uh, the mass scale up, I was talking and I offered my my statistics. Where does Hylion need to break even on their sales? I think ten thousand a year. I think ten thousand a year is where they need to be, and I think they need to be chomping at the bit to build that backlog. A lot of people are like, "Hire Ryan, hire Ryan." So I've got six jobs, guys. I don't I don't need to go. I do enough for Hylion free of charge, and in this life nothing is free of charge. What do I get for it? I don't even get a, hey, thanks a lot through Twitter. 
You know what I mean? A lot of people are like, oh, they hear you, Ryan. No, I don't believe they do, man. I don't believe they do. The significance of my channel has nothing to do with the 30,000 subscribers that I have on the channel. I think there's probably, I don't know, a few thousand real subscribers. The ones that I really care about, to be honest with you, um, I've thought about hiding that because I don't really care about it at all. Um, but then again, people look at that and they're like, oh, this guy's got 30,000. He must really know what he's talking about. They come on, they catch one one message and they're out. I don't understand, man. The, you know, how is this guy showing me how to fall into my Lamborghini after a, after a week? This guy sucks. You suck. Everybody sucks. Life sucks. I suck. But I'm trying to find the easy way, right? Yeah, that's some real talk for you, man. It's really tough. But uh, always, always trying to strike at that value proposition, man, for, for real folks out there um, that are truly looking to organically build portfolios, man, for them and their families. It's just that simple. That's what it comes down to, man. Building, building a little damn bit of wealth. And the funny thing about it is some of the sources of the bitching I find are people with $100 in the market, $1,000 in the market. And they just haven't gone through those learnings of having capital exposed to wealth. Guys, if I looked at my portfolio now and compared it to three months ago, I'd be like, damn, I'm down 30K, 40K, whatever it is. I don't know. I don't track that shit, but I'm just giving you a, a good faith estimate. And, and people would look at that and be like, you're effing nuts, Ryan. You suck. You're a terrible investor. Okay, I'm terrible. I go back five years and my portfolio was all of worth $75,000. Now I look at it at a half a million dollars. And I'm like, how in the holy hell did I get here? Outside of just applying the strategies that I openly share with you guys all the time. It's it's just, it's not rocket science. What is going to be impossible for the untrained investor to do is to take these strategies and, and, and validate them from day to day, from week to week. God dang it, Ryan. I've been invested here for 12 days, man. And I've, I've been down every one of those days, Ryan, Ryan, I've been down, Ryan, I'm down 12, 12 effing days, Ryan, I'm, I'm down, Ryan, what gives, what should I sell it all, Ryan, should I sell it all, man, so I can buy it back at a cheaper price, Ryan, what gives, 12 days, they come back 18 days later, and they're like, it's it, Ryan, Ryan, it's still down, it's still down, baby, what's, what's going on here, man, what, what should I, I'm starting to sweat a little bit, I'm starting to lose sleep over this, Ryan, Man, I find myself looking at it all the time. Ryan, I was down. Ryan, I was down a dollar forty-two today. This this is not this is not good. Right? I don't I don't do that to pick fun. I do that to strike at the very mentality that I think plagues our application as retail investors. Can it be fought? Yes, it can. But it takes time to evolve to be able to understand why it is you do what you do. The validation that I just shared with you 75,000 five years ago, would I be in this position without investing now if I hadn't done it then? There's where your thought needs to be. Not, oh my God, Ryan, you're crazy, man. Like you, Jesus, you should sell it all right now and just sit on your wad or, you know, Matt posted in Twitter. I don't know if Matt Money's in here, but he, he posted, he said, should I sell a quarter of my portfolio and go buy a Lambo? You know, he does that to pick at the very mentality that I'm picking at is because people do think that way. I want to be a millionaire. I want to have a Lamborghini. I want to have this. I, I, I want, I want this. I want that. I, I fucking F and life owes me. Get the hell out of my way, Ryan. If you can't show me, somebody will, right? Life owes me. The system owes me. People owe me. My friends, my enemies, everybody owes me. Get the hell out of my way, right? There's never any personal responsibility to look in the damn mirror and be like, maybe, I don't know, maybe I can just, I don't know, kick my own ass a few times and just help myself. Right? Right? Yeah. Very, very critical of the information that I have coming through. I certainly do put a lot of value in the network of people, man, that make up this, this fine community here. We'll jump into the portfolios, man, really, really quick. And then I want to get to the gallery here. All right. Cannot expect to have something tomorrow without putting away something today. <laughs> Dark shadow, man. Yeah, and that's the whole idea. Look, I'm, what are you going to do? Are you going to live life a bitch? Make a choice. Make a choice. I, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm a fighter. Um, 
And, and I think people are too passive. I'm an introvert. Like I, most people, I've, I've admitted to this to you guys. The irony in the whole thing is I run an independent investor channel that I'm very, very proud of. I come and I share my story, blah, blah, blah. But people, for the most part, piss me off. Uh, they disappoint me. Um, good people, I, I will I will go to my grave and I will defend and I will be your staunchest advocate. Um, a, as long as you show me a little bit of passion for your own equity, right? Show that the very value uh, of the weight that you carry around on your own two feet is actually putting some sort of value out into the world, man, for others and yourself. Do that and I'll show you all the respect in the world, okay? Do it not, especially, and doing it not means that you expect to be given in this life. I have been given nothing. I look back, the 75 to 500,000 that I'm about to declare to you now has been by nature of my own action. It has been not by me expecting to be given. It is not by my reliance on some other program, that of which I either be, either believed in or didn't believe in, but I, I blindly put it into play. And here I am now posing as if it was my program all from the beginning. <laughs> Look at me. You should turn it, tune into me because I'm, I've built this wealth based on my smarts and, and, and absolute genius in the stock market. <laughs> Really? Jesus, I, I just admitted through the group, man, that I have probably just, it, hopefully a little less mistakes than successes in the stock market investing. The difference between me and most people is I don't I don't sit there and manifest over the successes. Um, I'm hard on myself for the uh, failures, um, but I, I, I let bygones be bygones. I let successes and failures be water under the bridge because I've explained this to a lot of people, man. I spend a lot of my time forward thinking, thinking about the future, thinking about the future. Now, and people are like, ah, do it, do it, do it. Nah, it has nothing to do with that. I, I'm good. I'm in the future, man. I, I'm in the position two or three years from now where I look back at this and I had one of two decisions. Hold highly on at $5 a share or sell it. Th those are two decisions to have. Those are two decisions, right? Where am I going to be two, three, five years from now? Be reflecting on this. If I made a decision on the way I felt today when it hit $5.08, well, maybe I would have felt better in the short term, I guess. Um, but um, I've been through this way, way too many times to understand that that only sets yourself up for regret. And I've built a position that is buffered. Um, I don't have all my life savings in Hylion. I have a big position. A lot of people, man, they, they want to, I had an invite. If you guys are wondering what the Ricardo invite was, um, you follow me on my Hylion videos and you know that there was just absolute rude comments. I said, come on my live stream, then I'll give you all 60 minutes to, to vent to a live audience as to why I've got it wrong. And you're so right. Um, I don't think either scenario exists in this world. I don't think anybody, myself included, or anybody that I've ever met, celebrities or, or anybody in power, deserves the right to be put on, on a pedestal in the, on this earth. I don't do that. You breathe the same damn air as me. You buy the same Apple stock as me. <laughs> you're, you're probably working maybe even harder than I am and maybe even deserve more respect than me. Maybe you, in the eyes of society, does not garner the respect that you deserve teachers, firefighters, law enforcement, tradesmen, truck drivers, right? Maybe you don't garner the attention and respect that you deserve, right? Okay. I'm kind of here to level that bullshit because I just don't, I don't do that. I don't put people on a pedestal just by nature of their reputation. Hell, behind closed doors, they could be the biggest piece of shit out there and you put them on a pedestal, man, and glorify them to the moon. Nah, I'd rather give you more realistic of an application and tell you that there is no perfection out there. Zero. There is none. We're all just dirty, smelly human freaking beings trying to make some sense out of this deal while we're all attached to this rock for the short, short life that we're all living. Okay. That's some reality for you. Let's jump into some portfolios, man. Uh, give you the bad news for this week, I guess. Anyway, 
um, brokerage account took a little bit of, of retraction. I took $6,000 from this account and I, I funded my Roth IRA account. I'll probably do a split funding in the other Roth to get the 12,000 max funding uh, into the Roth. The takeaway for you guys uh, is to earmark what I've already explained to you for 2021 contributions up to April 15th and for 2022, 2023 comp, uh, contributions eligible now as of January 1, all the way up until April 15th of 2023. Okay. I'm rewinding. I play back. Anyway, that was the Roth contribution schedule, uh, but no huge uh, uh, changes here. Values whipping some ass. Uh, Lockheed Martin, probably the uh, performer here. Uh, Boeing has caught fire uh, from the 190s. It's uh, flirting with two and a quarter right now. AT&T is coming back. There's big flow into value right now. Uh, I don't think it's anything fundamental, to be honest with you. I say that tongue in cheek. I just think it's a, it's a refuge, to be honest. I don't necessarily think people are looking at AT&T and saying it's a phenomenal investment. Let me take a stake in, in AT&T right now. Uh, Lockheed Martin, um, I, I do believe that is the case, uh, but there is a rotation out of uh, some big growth uh, right now. I think the fang, fang names outside of Facebook, which uh, had a, a nice day today, um, are, are taking a little bit on the chin. Google had a good day today. Amazon took a rotation out. Uh, uh, Salesforce.com on this list is taking a rotation out. So just to kind of give you an indication that I think there is certainly a flow of value um, where those funds are coming from. If it's a safe, safe haven, utilities uh, have done quite well. Uh, materials have secretly done well. And then energy continues to outperform. Uh, Dexter Drive Mix Game, a shout out to Dexter, my good boy. He's a, a great YouTube channel, Drive Mix Game. Given that granular in the sand perspective, no pun intended, he's down there in West Texas. Uh, but um, doing a great job called maybe the potential for $5 diesel. Um, why well, Do you think Hylion's going to be attractive if diesel goes to $5? I don't know. Probably not. Probably go to a dollar a share. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, it, we're down week over week in this. So the, the reduction there is is uh, what it was last week, minus 6000 in cash that I had in that. Uh, Roth won here, 92% uh, in the stocks, uh, Chevron, Disney, Hylion. Uh, JP Morgan entered back into 25. Uh, so I saved a $250 bill today, just swing trading it uh, and entering back into the stock. Uh, JPM is trading at less than 10 times forward. Uh, Microsoft, uh, very good. One of those um, technology companies that you're going to have to pay up for. Uh, ONL is the spinoff from Realty Income. That's the office space uh, segment of, of that business, some bullish thesis around ONL. I've actually emboldened that position since it spun off uh, from Realty Income. Uh, Pepsi, the S&P 500 continues to do pretty well. Small caps uh, growth continues to get annihilated. Uh, V&Q, which is the real estate um, uh, sector specialty ETF from Vanguard. Uh, SoFi, anything growthy uh, is just getting crushed. Uh, Tat Global took a one-day 30% increase uh, for no apparent reason. I, I, I couldn't find why. It just shot up 30% in a day. That was nice to see. Uh, but uh, still down uh, in all of the speculative growth in the portfolio. No problem. Um, we're, we're good. We're sitting good on the, the growth that I've got. And uh, it'll be fun to own these positions and watch how these positions transpire and continue along their growth trajectory. I think... The one that I'm the least um, the least uh, excited about with regard to its recent growth prospects uh, is Hylion, just because I don't know what progress they're making behind closed doors because they just don't share that information openly. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, here's mine. Alibaba's come back a little bit. That's nice to see. I trimmed the position in ExxonMobil. Uh, for all you home gamers out there, Facebook came back nicely today. IBM and KD, KD being the spinoff, IBM, Triple Qs have really come off, of course, with the technology and rotation out of that sector. Um, j and and Healthcare is hanging in there nicely. RDSA, which is Royal Dutch Share uh, Shell um, with oil, is coming back nicely. Uh, I was in the red for many, many years on these positions, and uh, they're really coming back nicely. Uh, SoFi's in the gutter. VIG, I upped that. I now own 100 shares of VIG. Uh, so that's a nice, nice staple 
in this portfolio. Just wonderful, wonderful fund to own. 10% clip, dividend payer, uh, stocks that have paid and appreciated their dividend over the years, managed passively by, by Vanguard, doesn't get much better than that. Uh, I'll take it and live to fight another day. This is this is one that takes no effort to own zero, mind you, and then VPU with the utilities there to round out my portfolio. Just sitting on it uh, the week up, week over week. Don't pay much attention to that spark line uh, because that was uh, a, a, the fund up really of the 6,000 that, that of the inflows in here. Um, down on the sector specialty portfolio dipped back below 20. It hit 20 there for a bit. No problem. I mean, this is just great. As the dollar cost average funds flow into this, uh, we'll buy at cheaper prices and live to fight another day. I'm not going to spend all day on that. Here's the 79 <laughs> dividend portfolio here. Um, just flirting with that 30 grand mark. Uh, Want to hit that uh, 50 grand in this. That's the next strategic threshold in this. Strategic goal of this portfolio is $100,000. Uh, we'll get there. My goodness, I've got to the 30 grand mark, one third of my goal in around just over two years. Uh, just over two years, December of 2019, we had this one's birthday. Uh, so this one's existed for just over a couple of years, man. You see the power uh, of investing. Um, here it is. And here's the little bond portfolio. I, I put a $50 bill in this every week. That's it. It's It's it been up week over week, every week since I've started declaring it to you guys. Um, so there's that. Um, the TSP took it on the chin. I'm not really sure why. I believe that um, this will be up next week. I'm calling it on the live stream when I declare it. So pay attention to this. Um, this is my uh, passive. So for a lot of you guys, this would be the equivalent to the 401k. Um, this is passive. I do not mess with this at all. I do not touch this. This is sacred passive. In other words, I, I speak with people at work all the time who are like, man, my TSP is kicking ass, Ryan. Should I should I sell it all? I know the market's going to go down and then I can buy back in. I'm like, say what you just said slower because what you just said is it's impossible to do. Just take it from me, man. It's impossible to do, to, to time the market in that regard. It's just absolutely impossible. So um, I invest a 75, 15, 10 in this and I don't touch it. I just leave it as is. Um, here's the growth in Robinhood. Of course, growth in the FANG names have, have rolled off. Uh, so the VUG is going to suffer. No problem. If it suffers too much, I'll just double I'll double this. I'll, I'll just double the account. No problem. But I'll monitor it. And this is more of a token position so I can actually become familiar with Robinhood. If I like it, I'll recommend it. It's easy. Kind of cartoonish, to be honest with you. Um, I wouldn't have the bulk of my money with Robin Hood. I, I would I would take an established broker uh, like a Charles Schwab or a, a Bank of America is fine too. Um, you know, it, it's not going to give you a back massage, but it is an established institutions. To be quite honest with you, man, if I can level with you, I don't trust these bastards. I don't trust them at all. What's going on behind the scenes? M1 is about the most trusty uh, discount broker, but... I don't put them in the same category as the major broker insofar as the audit scrutiny that they are uh, subject to. Um, and that's where the bulk of my money lies. But uh, these are fun accounts and th they work for what they're uh, what they're intended for. Here's the mid caps. Mid caps are taking it on the chin. Uh, I'm down 7% in mid caps now. Uh, no problem. We'll continue to monitor this. Uh, stand by. Uh, independent investor channels on the uh, early onsets of uh, engaging on some awareness with uh, Globex. Um, a very cool company. Very cool. We have featured uh, Elaine Guy, the CEO, uh, on the company and on the channel here uh, in 2021. Uh, awesome stuff. And they're they're working on some great stuff, um, trying to fight on pe people's behalf. They've gave them, given away the farm with regard to open source uh, and our privacy and data uh, that exists on the on the open cloud um, for uh, Amazon Web Services, uh, the Microsoft Cloud. Um, and, you know, how we uh, transact, even Facebook, WhatsApp, man, every now and then again, I'll, I'll have some, you know, lady come in there and invite me to her personal room. And it's like, I, I don't know you. Um, that's that's right there. An example of how our data is uh, really it's plagiarized and it's sold. Uh, our, our data is valuable. Globex takes your data and safeguards it, not here in the United States, subject to the Cloud Act of 2019, uh, rather in Switzerland. Uh, which is a company that um, I might just say has their shit together. <laughs> they do. Um, 
beautiful country, I might add too, but they, they've they got their shit together. Um, they don't do idiotic things like we do here in the United States, uh, which we do a lot of good stuff and we do a lot of stupid stuff too. Um, crypto, uh, last three, four days, been on a tear, um, made a nice little chunk back in this. Be nice to see uh, this rally continue in crypto. Uh, you know, Bitcoin took a basing in the low 40s. Um, these areas and pockets of the portfolio that perform when I don't think that they're performing, right? So um, I, I will declare here, just it dipped below the 500. Ooh, ah, <laughs> this is a big threshold. I talked about it on the route to seven figures and the steps that are necessary. Um, I declared to you guys that I'm on step 10 out of 11, uh, really kind of earmarking those thresholds of money that you'll need to meet. You know, the 500, 1,000, uh, 2,500, 5,000, 10,000, 25,000, 50,000, 100, 250, 500. Those are the steps to wealth that you need to think about. And you think, okay, Ryan, come on. You know, to get to 10,000, basically, you're saying you need to get to 10,000. Yeah. Un-F your mind, okay? And start to think about money the way I do, okay? You'll be better off for it, okay? Um, unless you have a better way. And you'd like to explain to me how it is that you're uh, earmarking your progress and you're en route to different strategic goals in your application. I'll hear you out, but I'm just giving you a framework and swim lanes to stay in because most people need that. They don't have the first F and clue how they can get to their first 10 grand. Okay. I'm telling you that it's easier to do than possible. The first incentive threshold is $500. Most people could get there in a matter of three seconds. The irony in the whole thing is most people are unwilling to do that because they think about everything that they're giving up to elect that 500 to something other than that will give them instant gratification. God, that's an awful big TV right now. God dang, Ryan, are you sure this shit? God dang, remember the 12 days? God dang, about $500, man. I'm down $2.76, man, you bastard. You know, God, the, everything they said about YouTube was true, man. 12 days, Ryan, 12 days, man. And it's all your fault. <laughs> but uh, we'll get back up above that uh, 500. As part of my strategic initiative at the end of last year on the Independent Investor Channel, we didn't reincorporate uh, the LLC, we are still Cornerstone Capital Solutions LLC. Um, we have um, leveraged those opportunities under its own umbrella. It was a strategic move that I had wanted to make for a while since I rolled out the initial uh, LLC in the company. Um, those also add to that bottom line that I do not declare um, on this thread. I might start doing that. I have no problem with that. I think about money differently. I'm not all secretive and you know, okay, this is my shit. You know, you've got to watch me, but uh, you know, you can't be privy to all my tricks of the trade. You know, make no mistake about it. If you knew the truth about YouTube, you wouldn't catch so much scrutiny. Ryan, you put out highly on videos because it's monetized. That was a comment that I got this week. That's funny. Like, really? All right. The $28 that I make off of that 3000 view video, if you honestly think that that's my motivation, man, you are highly, highly underestimating me, highly underestimating me in understanding where I'm, my motives are. You're trying to influence the stock, Ryan. Really? I just told you I have 30. I'm an insignificant channel on YouTube. The significance of this channel exists within the two to three thousand people that come in. And they enjoy being around not only myself and the message, but each other. It's that simple. Okay. It's that simple. If you think for a second that the independent investor channel is going to move a stock, and I'm talking any stock that I roll through on the channel, you are sorely, sorely overestimating our reach on the channel. I don't believe it for a second. I don't. What it does do is it gives us a voice. That's for sure. So when I get pissed off at the lack of transparency, i.e. zero, I get to come on and at least vent my piece. And a, a worker and a fighter like myself who doesn't mind coming on and fighting for a cause that I believe in, yeah, I believe where most people have to succumb to being quiet, I don't do that, man. I'll fight. People are like, you're bitching, Ryan. No, I'm not. I'm doing what it is that I feel like I want to do in way of effort, okay? A lot of people just invest in a stock and they just expect that it's going to drive them to the moon automatically while they're sleeping. Hell, I don't even want to be awake for the ride. To hell with this, man. Just wake me up, man, when it's at X number of dollars, man. I'll be good to go, right? 
I, I don't even want to stay cognizant for this ride, you know? People owe me. Life owes me. What gives, man? You owe me, Ryan. Send me a bill for that dollar and 76 cents you're down in the stock market. I'll sell you the money, all right, if you're that concerned about it. Get a little bit more cavalier, okay? Stop being so tight with your money. Don't be a tightwad. Don't be a bitch. Stop justifying idiotic purchases in your life, okay? Where somebody would justify a $75,000 jacked up truck, dude, that's bad ass, bro. You know how much scrutiny I get for taking a position on a stock to try to increase my net worth in this life? Like that's my, I'm not trying to like do anything. I'm not trying to like piss people off. I'm not trying to like lose my entire net worth. Um, I'm not trying to like lose sleep every night. I'm not trying to stress myself out. Uh, I'm not trying to like drive my investments into the dirt. I'm not trying to like lead others into the dirt. Okay. I'm trying to increase my position. If you want to understand the truth of it. Okay. Would I like to see the stock go up? Sure. That would be nice. That would be nice. But I understand the game insofar as understanding that sometimes the stock market, it does something that you may not expect that it's going to do in the short term. But you always have the ace up your sleeve and application with understanding the stock market investing requires um, a little bit more perspective on this deal and, 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 and not be so much of a bitch. <laughs> Summed up. I got a couple minutes, man, and I, I don't want to go over 60 minutes tonight, guys. I got Brody Bell in the house. You, know, you guys have been with me for a long, long time, man. A lot of, lot of kudos to you guys, and, and thanks so much, man. I really appreciate you guys uh, joining the message. Uh, Kyle's my brother from Canada. He's my Canuck brother. He's my Canuck brother, even though I do think that he would have a hell of a time here in the United States. I'm pretty hard on the U.S., uh, but I think uh, Kyle would actually fit in quite nicely here. Um, I don't know how you guys justify paying such high taxes up there. Kyle's like, no, Ryan, you got it wrong, man. <laughs> His message will eternally echo through the ages. Well, fantastic. Just like Socrates, right? Ryan's right up there on that pedestal, right? <laughs> no, man. I just speak my mind, hell, which is uh, what a lot of people lack in these days, man. They really do. Just, just speak your mind. Ryan got me started about five years ago. Yeah, he was original, man. He was one of the first subscribers to the channel and... I just really appreciate it. These long-standing folks, I, I hope over five years, I haven't just bored the hell out of you. You know, I, I think I, I make my message in so far as people can come in, consume a little content, you know, put a little few things in, 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 in motion that I talk about, step away from the channel. No problem. I mean, I've got to fill every minute up with content, trust me. And if I could go for two, three more hours, I would. I enjoy the hell out of it. Um, I, I pushed back to a 60 minute YouTube because I felt like a 60 minute live stream because I felt like it it was hurting the channel really bad. Like YouTube doesn't pay me for my time uh, on a 60 minute live stream. I think they should adjust their algorithm to accommodate for that. Like everybody stays in here uh, for the majority of the live stream. I, I think it's awesome. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, 60 minutes is kind of right on that sweet spot for sure. Move mountains. You bet your ass, man. You bet your ass. Um, you want to get motivated? No, try hanging out with me for a while. Um, I'll fire you up. I'm motivated all the time, baby. Life is good, man. How are you doing, Ryan? Fabulous. Doing great all the time. Really? How was your weekend, Ryan? Every weekend I have is fabulous. They're all good. I've never had a bad one. Life is good. It's just absolutely fantastic, man. The focus that I've got right now on, on some of the focused initiatives that I have um, are exciting. And 2022 is going to be a lot of fun here as we roll some of these stuff out. Proper 19's laughing his ass off. He, he's like, am I a bitch? <laughs> no, you're not, man. This is pretty funny. Uh, here we go. Cherie. I bought some Highland at seven. I think I just, yeah, you betcha. Just hold it seven, man, for sure. Um, I've got lots of blocks uh, up closer to 20 um, all the way down here. I've got some stuffs with a five in front of it, too. Uh, it's no problem. Long-term basing. Um, you know, it, it's it's just the time that we're in right now. And um, your thesis has to be the potential uh, going long term. That's for sure. Eric Weaver, totally agree with Robin Hood, like any tool, though, uh, all depends on how you use it. Yeah, yeah. M1 is my absolute choice. And I, there's not a close second, to be honest with you. Um, Weeble, Moomoo and Robin Hood, I put all in the same category and they are a distant second. 
uh, to, to M1 Finance, which is far superior of a wealth building tool. I mean, you, you want to be entertained. I, you want to have a cartoonish like BS thing on your iPhone. I, you can do that if you want to. Robinhood's very easy to use, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, M1 Finance is a wealth building machine. Uh, it's fabulous. It's just great. I uh, got Bobby in the house, man. I agree. The market doesn't make sense, especially if you plan to hold for years. Thanks for the content. You bet. We'll keep rolling that content out. I, I know it pisses some people off, but uh, I appreciate it. You know, like I watch my highly on videos back and I'm like, how can we improve? What did we miss? Did we miss anything? Could I have sharpened up on some stuff? And that that's just my critical application on making sure that the message is coming through uh, with some clarity and the intent of my message is coming through. And I can tell you my intent has nothing to do with the, the few dollars that I make for putting a 3000 view video out that I know there's a lot of people watching it. I watch all the highly on content that comes through YouTube. Um, Bloodhound Dividend Investor, that's one that's putting out some content, um, doing a good job. Um, he doesn't think that anybody else on YouTube is doing uh, highly on content. Uh, I beg to differ. <laughs> so, But uh, nonetheless, I, I appreciate those efforts. And I stay for the totality of those videos because I'm interested in the content for sure. So very good. I think all good's getting set up here. Really enjoyed the stream. Thank you so much, Sam. You're the best. Um, that's why we call you all good. That's because you're awesome. And you make everybody's life that much more enjoyable. Um, that's what I need to be, keep on trading. Um, that's what I need to do, but I keep trading. Ah, swing trading has its place, man. Don't beat yourself up. Uh, a lot of the profits, man, I was able to generate in 2020 um, really set me up for uh, putting a lot of that house money to work in Hylion. See, I think a lot of people misconstrue that I've put my life savings in Hylion. Couldn't be further from the truth. Couldn't be further from the truth. Um, I've, I've, I mean, I'm in a position to justify the chance that I'm taking on this position, and I will wait as long as it it needs, um, irrespective of how scathing I am on Twitter, um, calling out a CEO that uh, I think is in over seals, man. Like, stand up to the plate and, and start taking some effing ownership, man. Be a man. Be a man. Well, 28, you're not a man, but to be a man. I'm asking you. Like, be a CEO. I don't care if you're a man or, like, you don't want to self-identify. I, I don't know. I don't care. Be a CEO. Stand up and 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 take some ownership of what's going on right now. Um, the ship is sinking. <laughs> take some ownership. I don't know. Go down and patch a few holes if you'd like. Ship's on fire. It's sinking. What do you do? Uh, talk about coffee mugs? I don't know. If that's your solution, then that's your solution. But you seem to be a fairly smart, intelligent guy. I'm, I'm here to tell you that your sentiment, what a little bit is left in the stock, is is slowly dissipating. And it's going to take that much more time if you just don't like head it off at the pass and start talking about the goings on of the company. If you put silence on the line, people have to imply that there's nothing going on. And the market interprets that negatively every single time. You betcha. Good stuff, man. Get Kelvin in the house. Great to see you, my brother. Appreciate it. Going just a couple minutes over here uh, to address some of the comments, and and you bet. I appreciate that. Very cool. Wait, what? Wait, what? I said, don't be a bitch. I I don't know how to say it in any other language, and that wasn't that wasn't aimed at you. That was the general theme tonight for all retail investors out there that uh, invest a hundred dollars and they're pissed off because now they've lost twenty percent. They're down to eighty. What does that really mean? Please explain your grievance to me. Please explain your grievance to me. And I will either do one of two things. I will tell you, number one, uh, don't be a bitch. Or I will agree with you and I will uh, share in your sorrow for being down 20% in the stock market. Medical, good luck at the portfolio. Thoughts on AMC, garbage. <clears throat> That's my... Hylion to BKKT. Is that a transition to BKKT or it's going in the ship bucket or something? I'm not sure what that means. It might be a ticker symbol uh, to trade all Hylion shares and enter into BKKT. Rick says perseverance is the word and it gets tested every town. Then, yeah, that's right. Rick's a big bull in Hylion. Absolutely. Hylion 2022 price target. My price target has to do with unforeseen catalysts. Uh, and without those catalysts, the stock will remain either static or will continue to digress. Uh, 2022 is an entire year 
uh, for the company to find catalysts in so far as solidifying the 75 miles of BEV technology, taking advantage of some of those credits um, that evidently Nikola has been given credit for in the Los Angeles area, 125,000 to be specific. Um, they need to leverage some of that stuff. If some of those things materialize over the next 2022, my price target is $24. That's a token uh, price target. Because like I said, targets for sales round out at about 10,000 units. 10,000 units, it, it very, very simple. Puts them at about 300 million in revenue, bottom line earnings, right? That's at about a 35% margin, assuming that they can sell X number of units. If half of them are hybrids, which are a lot less uh, profit, um, they make about 5,000 per unit, but the Hypertruck ERX, they make just over 90,000 uh, per unit. Um, which is pretty darn good. Um, and then 35% to the margins on their total overall revenue puts them at about 350 million, 120 million to keep the lights on. You know, a, a couple hundred million in profit uh, puts the company up at about, you know, six, eight billion. And, and then we're talking about a stock that's not valued at $24 anymore. We're starting to get up into the 50 to $75 range. Uh, and and upwards. Now, once they start to turn out some of those numbers, um, then the metrics don't just go down, right? Once the fleet starts to enjoy, it's kind of like a domino effect, and we'll start to get some more predictable numbers um, as they start to meet the, some of those milestones. Whether or not that happens this year, next year, three years from now, I don't know. What I'm really looking for in the short term is a little bit of reprieve uh, in the sentiment around the stock, and if it returns to the 10 to $15 range, I'll be super stoked. If it starts to get up into the $18, $19 range, I'll revise my price target up to the low 40s because I think that's the next price target based on the catalyst that I have earmarked um, insofar as winning over uh, further orders to the backlog, um, getting government uh, intervention, uh, the price of diesel. All, lots of things can happen throughout 2022 to help me drive my price target, uh, but $24 is where I'm at. No analyst um, is 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 ballsy enough to do that. No nobody, and the chances of it hitting $24 are are, are far far less uh, applicable based on what we know now. That price target is based on the catalyst that could transpire over this year with uh, the continued win of orders the continued progress of Hypertruck ERX and ramping up to um, mass scale, uh, the, the Innovation Council stepping in and placing uh, some binding orders, solidifying some of the old non-binding orders into LOIs, things like that, um, that I think if they're doing the right thing, they'll do. If not, they'll continue to fall on their face um, and, and continue to say nothing. Um, I think this next earnings call is going to be of interest to me. Um, I'm going to be taking a look at the accounts receivable. Obviously, they've sold some hybrid units. They're not giving them away for free. I, I don't know. Maybe they are. I, maybe they are. Maybe they're just giving them away for free. I don't know. You know, it's amazing. I sell product now through the through the independent investor channel. I make hella profit. I was asked this week, what's your profit margin on the independent investor channel? I was like, what do you mean? It's 100%. I don't have any overhead to run this. You know, but Hylion's burning through what 130, 115 million, I guess per per year. I guess I don't think it's cold. It's per year to keep the lights on, pay the salary, buy the product, to keep everything to a churn, to march toward that 35% final ma uh, margin, assuming that they're able to sell the volume. So we got a long way to go on this sucker. There's no doubt about it, man. And whether or not they're going to make it, I mean, my hope has diminished a lot uh, as it's transpired. You know, when we're talking about single orders, 10 go to a fleet here and there, you know, it makes me think, are they going to be able to get to that 10,000 um, addressable market and fleet size? Absolutely doable, right? If if this truck can do what it is that it says it can do, have a hundred mile range and transport cargo in a non-diesel capacity from point A to point B with fueling infrastructure in place right now, that's the pre pedigree right there that should be a no-brainer to sell to industry. But who the hell's going to sell it to them? Hylion? Uh, they've proven um, zero in this category in their ability to sell. That is horrible. I told them I would sell shit for them for free. It's easy. I'm like, Jordan Belfort? Bitch. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. He was awesome. Sell me this pen. <laughs> Guys, we'll wrap it down. Really appreciate your uh, uh, ownership. 
uh, the community. We had a great live stream tonight, man. Keep it up. I really appreciate it. Uh, it, it. It doesn't go unless I have a nice audience in here, man, to enjoy. Uh, it gets me fired up. The more people in here, I mean, I could imagine if I had a live stream of a thousand people, hell, I'd be doing backflips, probably be falling on my head or, or or something, or I don't know, man, drinking maybe a lot more than I drank tonight. I'm going to finish this after I step off the line with you kind folks. Um, I've got a few uh, promotional opportunities coming up here. Globex being one, um, check that out. It's it's a really intriguing company, man. I talked a little bit about it tonight. Um, on the, 20, the week of the 24th, I will have Element Nutrition dropping. Um, that's another really interesting health and wellness company. I'm going to try to find their product. Uh, I'm going to try to try it. Those promotional videos, man, you got to give me some latitude on that, guys. I understand that it's a black eye for a lot of YouTube channels. I will not accept that. I will not. Um, where some of my projects I do for free, I expect latitude on those ones that are fairly lucrative and they help me keep this ship afloat. Because unlike some other CEOs, okay, I am very aware of all the systems that make up this complex system called the Independent Investor Channel and to keep the ship afloat and to keep it progressing towards something special, man, we got to be able to keep the lights on because to actually realize the goal of the channel of empowering one investor at a time, we, we've got to make sure that we're firing on, on all fronts. And there's not a project that I do under the Cornerstone Capital Solutions umbrella that I'm not proud of in reaching deep and finding that one investor who needs a little bit of coaching on the side, needs a little bit of motivation, needs a little bit of explanation as to how we make sense of this deal uh, in, in, an, in an environment that is doling out a lot of volatility as of late. Guys, thank you so much. Really appreciate you. We'll be back next Friday. The Independent Investor Channel live stream, fastest 60 minutes on YouTube. Be well, guys. We'll check you next Friday.